although I don't know that we'll ever really know uh, a motive for someone who would do this to innocent little children. And then, of course, all of the families connected to those innocent children. Uh, I mentioned this name before, and he's with us now, Lieutenant Chris Alvarez with the Texas Department of Public Safety. Lieutenant, thank you for taking time out of your day. I know this is just an overwhelming incident for you and your colleagues to not only live through, but to process. Um, my colleague, Robert Sherman, just updated us on the number of children at 19 now, 19 dead, two uh, teachers dead. Can you update me on any further details, sir? Right, so Robert Sherman, what he reported earlier, that is correct, that is accurate information. We do have 19 children that are deceased right now, and of course, two adults, two teachers that are deceased. That is the final update that we have at this time. Uh, it's still an active investigation. We're still trying to determine any type of clues, any evidence, uh, but it's a multi-agency cooperation in this investigation. We have FBI, ATF, multiple agencies on the state side, local and county working together to try to determine exactly what triggered uh, this incident to take place and al also what the motives were. I know we have a, a long delay between us, so um, be patient with me, sir, as I ask you this next question. I covered Sandy Hook, and I was there as those parents were being notified in their reunification center, and it was one of the most heart-wrenching things I've ever been through in 34 years of doing this job. I can only imagine that this is still going on, but can you please let me know where do things stand with reuniting these parents? Have all parents been told um, if they're not going to be seeing their children again. Right, so we are currently working on that right now. We do have our local police departments, counties, as well as also volunteers assisting us with that. And right now they are providing those updates to those families and trying to reach out to those families and locate those families as far as any potential victims. So we are constantly updating that. That is a priority right now to identify those families as well and try to reunite them with their children and also to identify those uh, that are that are deceased right now. So if I understand you correctly, there are still some families who do not know that their children uh, are in that count of 19 innocent little victims dead. There are still some parents who have not been notified. Well, that, I mean, as right now, I cannot provide that update as far as who has not been uh, notified. Again, that's a separate entity. We do have local law, law enforcement working with those families. They know the area, they know the families. So they're trying to reach out to those families and identify those uh, victims as well as any potential victims as well. But we will provide updates as we continue. As I mentioned before, this is still an active investigation. There's so much happening right now that we're trying to determine exactly what took place and trying to identify those individuals and reunite those families. I'm going to ask you a couple of questions all at once because I know we have such a long delay uh, between us just with our technology here. But um, I know that you're likely still processing that crime scene. Have you been able to at least get the bodies of the children who were killed out of that school? Well, we are still currently processing the scene. It is a big scene. Um, there is multiple um, individuals, especially children, adults, uh, that lost their life in this particular incident. And we want to make sure we conduct a thorough investigation by processing every single piece of evidence that we can gather by working with the FBI, ATF. So as of right now, we're going to continue processing the scene until we feel at that point that we have obtained as much evidence as possible to make a strong case and have a strong case and put the clues together and determine exactly what took place. And of course, the the murderer in this case uh, is deceased himself. So it's hard to understand, I think, for a lot of lay people, what case would you possibly have to build at this point? But understandably, this is a massive crime scene and there is processing that must be done. I just want to show this picture while we're speaking, sir. This is the, uh, the killer, uh, the photograph of the killer in this case. Um, 18 years old, having just killed his own grandmother and then engaging uh, in body armor um, with all of those children and teachers in that school. Uh, one last very quick question. There was some discussion from a witness. It was a quick mention and nothing after that of a girlfriend of the shooter saying that she wanted to finish what he had started. Is there anything to that investigation? Because all I hear, sir, is that he acted alone. Are there any other people being investigated alongside of that uh, lone gunman?
Well, we're not going to rule that out. We're going to, like, as I mentioned before, we're going to conduct a thorough investigation to make sure that there was no other individuals involved. As far as the um, identification or the mention of a girlfriend, that has not been confirmed. That is not accurate information. We have not confirmed that. And I know you mentioned earlier as well as how much more can we process with this major crime scene since a suspect is deceased. But we do, we do have to provide some type of closure to these families and try to identify what actually took place by obtaining evidence, looking at social media platforms, the history of this suspect to try to determine exactly what triggered this event. Lieutenant Alvarez, thank you for taking the time to speak with us and God bless you and your community. Thank you for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.